Hi, I'm Maya Williams from notmock.com. This video and tract, which is a PDF file in the video descriptions box, is part of the playlist I've called Joy While Waiting. I explain what I'm doing on the first video of the playlist. Basically, all things were created by him and for him, Colossians 1.16. In other words, according to the Bible, God is speaking to us all the time through everything. All you need to be able to hear his voice is have spiritual discernment, which you'll have if you're born again, honest, and know the scriptures. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, John 10, 27. So I've interpreted every page of this book from cover to cover, including the covers, since it all ties in to what God is saying through this ministry. It's a 32 page book and my full interpretation is 52 pages. So with much more detail than what I'm doing here. You can get that free download, the full book, from my website. Starting at the top right, going clockwise, the general represents the king of kings. Maya represents me, a peculiar woman. The banquet represents the fellowship of the believers, and ultimately the marriage supper of the lamb, and Jesus who is food and drink. The noodles represent God's elect, and more specifically, the body of Christ. The ketchup represents the blood of Christ, and the queen represents the soon-to-be bride of Christ, the church, the queen of queens. These scenes sum up my walk for the past two decades since the Lord called me to speak up on his behalf to professing Christians. As Jesus said, I am sending you like sheep among wolves, and that's my testimony. No matter what I say or do, Christians rebuke me for it, just like the lost do. So while today's Christians don't reach the lost with the truth, like they think they do, because of God's grace, the lost still get fed, represented by that dog. If Christians had known what this means, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. They wouldn't have condemned the guiltless. Matthew 12, 7. God is mocking the body of Christ. That's what ding dong means. It's like he's saying, wake up, quoting Revelation 3, 1, you idiots. We're idiots because he's been knocking for centuries for most of Christian history. So you've got the so-called elder telling Maya that she needs manners when it's the supposedly mature Christians who need manners because they are having dinner with the queen, the soon-to-be bride of Christ. God told the body of Christ to not have leaders since he is our leader. Matthew 23 eight says, Ye may not be called rabbi, as in leader, for one is your director, the Christ, and all ye born again are brethren. That's in Young's literal translation. And Jesus warned us about so-called Christian leaders when he said the hireling careth not for the sheep, John 10, 13. Even though God had pagan Christianity published over two decades ago, the majority of the body of Christ has still kept on business as usual, even though that same year we had the 9-11 attacks. Therefore, ding dong! A messenger comes with a royal invitation, and all the elder supposedly mature Christian can do is think of their cheesy dinner that's been interrupted, which is exactly how it is in the real world of pagan churchianity as was revealed for all in 2015. I'm talking of the prophet God sent to John MacArthur, which was captured on video. Notice only Maya got invited, and she does what all Christians do, whine and complain, when we should jump and run when we're summoned by the king. While the messenger says the invitation is from the queen, it's really from the king, 
since the husband is the head of the wife, Ephesians 5.23. Maya leaves these people behind for better things, as I've done in reality, whereas those two focus on things that don't even matter. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart, 1 Samuel 16.7, which is exactly what the majority of the born again have done. Look at the outward appearance. And the messenger is reminding them, us, you, that there's no time. He's emphasized it because the Lord is coming back soon and nobody's ready, not really, as I cover throughout my material. Maya's leaving them behind. I have left the body of Christ behind because it's what Jesus said. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. In the same way, those of us who don't give up everything we have cannot be his disciples. Luke 14, 33. Maya is going through what I've often gone through, which is what Elijah went through and what New Testament disciples went through, since people, including the born again, aren't very nice. So at the same time, she's thinking and praying, you know, talking to the Lord. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The born again have rejected your covenant. In the Old Testament, it was the Israelites. For the last 2,000 years, it's been the born again, the body of Christ, along with unbelievers. They even put us out of the church, 3 John 1.10. But God is all over it, right? He says, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. And that's absolutely true of me, as my testimony and material reveal. That's Revelation 2.2. 2. As Elijah lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake, cookies in my case, bacon on the coals, and a cruise of water, Kool-Aid, at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. While she says she's never met a queen before, I'm all too familiar with the queen, the body of Christ. Not very nice, hardly. And this flight attendant represents an angel in the heavenly realms who serves God. The born again should be able to see the hand of God. He is the captain of our salvation, Hebrews 2.10. As his servant, this flight attendant is serving me, serving Maya, and through me, serving you. That's what angels do. <laughs> being ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. She also urges us to buckle up. In other words, God is pleading for us to have the belt of truth buckled around our waist. Ephesians 6.14, because the plane, the Lord, is coming in for a landing, as in he's coming back. And according to scripture, it's going to get pretty turbulent with great tribulation such as has never been and never will be, Matthew 24, 21. So I have her remembering, recalling that when Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and when the devil left him, angels came and ministered unto him. What God did for Jesus, he does for us. And he's done it for me. No, I've never seen an angel, but Every single time I get creamed for the Lord, he shows up greater than ever, like with these biblical interpretations. So as Maya arrives to see the queen, a red carpet was laid out for her, which represents what God has done for me, since a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven, John 3.27. I'm neither smarter nor purer than others. But neither am I the idiot or false prophet people seem to think I am. I'm who the Lord chose for this calling, just like the piece of gum I picked out of the pack for this particular time. 
there was nothing special or different about it. So you see Maya get temporarily mesmerized by worldly junk as her eyes bug out of her head because of the rock on the woman's hand. And you can tell the queen's children, the body of Christ, are snobs just by their posture, representing reality, as my life testimony reveals. Looking at the next picture, it's the queen, wife of the king of kings, who announces that the party is about to begin. The party is the latter rain, referring to Joel 2.23, the greatest outpouring of God's spirit during this present evil age, the greatest outpouring of history. He says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately. Pentecost and that outpouring 2,000 years ago was moderate. It was nothing compared to what he'll be doing. He will cause to come down for you the latter rain. Joel 2.23 so while Maya looks totally out of place and everyone is looking at her with contempt, she's actually a pretty important member of this little gala. 1 Corinthians 12.22 says, Those parts of the body that seem to be weaker, as people view me, are indispensable. Maya sits between the king and queen where all prophets have sat. The king tells her to hush because he tells the prophet when to speak and when not to speak. Revelation 22.10 says, He said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. In other words, speak. And Revelation 10.4 says, I was about to write, to speak, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things, as in, don't speak, hush. There's someone dining at the feast who clearly shouldn't be there according to scripture. And the feast, this gathering, represents communion, the fellowship of the believers, and ultimately the marriage supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ is supposed to be devoted to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer, Acts 12.42. And these gatherings are supposed to be love feasts. According to Jude 1.12, for example, but there are people there who are blemishes at our love feasts, eating with you without the slightest qualm, shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit, and uprooted twice dead. But it's not just the leaders, the hirelings, God is talking about. So there's someone who clearly shouldn't be there according to scripture. Ephesians 5.23 says Christ is the head of the church. Look at that table and find out who shouldn't be there. Like those books we had when we were kids. Highlights, I think they were called. <laughs> I remember correctly, they are highlights. So the Bible is like this one. The hardest hidden pictures book ever. And it's for kids ages 8 to 12. And scripture says, Jesus says, if you don't come to him like a little child, you're not getting in. <laughs> and neither should dogs be allowed to roam around freely because Philippians 3 2 says, beware of dogs so they don't belong in the gathering of the believers. As a servant of God, I'm being used as the Lord's sous chef having been asked to feed his sheep, referring to John 21, 17. And so I'm asking, will you be at the marriage supper of the Lamb? You will be if you're born again. So make sure you're born again. And if so, that's not the only thing that's important, being born again. Where will you be seated? How you live your life, how faithful you are, will determine whether you're sitting you know, how close to the Lord you're sitting. You might be sitting in the kids' table at the kitchen <laughs> if you don't behave. He says, many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Matthew 19.40 The servants, the born again, have been serving the meal, the food, Christ, 
who is the truth, for 2,000 years, but we've made it, made him look extremely unappetizing with all of our false doctrines, as he's having me reveal through this ministry. It's like everything he said to the Jews, he's saying to the born again. So since that day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up and sending them. Yet the body of Christ has hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. The born again, the body of Christ has done worse than the Jews. Because the Jews didn't have the completed word of God and neither did they have his spirit inside of them. Yet the born again have both, and in the U.S. we have a whole lot more than that. Maya knows what tastes better, the Lord, according to Psalm 34, 8. So she asks for it, waits for it, and receives it, because those who hope in him will not be disappointed, Isaiah 49, 23. And Matthew 7, 7 says, ask, and it shall be given you. We're also told to wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee, Psalm 37, 4. So she waits and she receives, but she reveals the human tendency to get off track, right? I'm so polite. <laughs> I'm so special. She asked the million dollar question all lost elect souls are asking because of the mess the body of Christ has made of the truth. The utensils represent the tens of thousands of so-called Christian denominations and all of the false doctrines churchianity preaches and walks in. The glasses represent the other religions. The noodles represent both the Lord who is the food, according to John 6.55, as well as the body of Christ, a bunch of wet behind the ears, wishy-washy noodles. I'm referring to Ephesians 4.14, which says that we're infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Christian history reveals that's true of the body of Christ. The book Pagan Christianity also revealed it. And the ketchup represents the classic and very expensive wine sauce, the blood of Christ. It's a very expensive sauce because we've been bought at a price, according to 1 Corinthians 7.23. All that suffering he went through for us on the cross. And it's a wine sauce because it's the cup of the new covenant, which is in his blood, which was poured out for us, Luke 22.20. So on receiving her food, Maya says, excuse me, which fork is for pasta? And he says, there is no pasta fork. So how do I eat it? I don't know. Eat it the way you're used to. The king pretends to not know what's going on, what needs to be done, and that he doesn't even care when he's overseeing the whole thing, according to Psalm 50, 21. He says, when you did these things and I kept silent, you thought I was exactly like you, but I now arraign you and set my accusations before you. That's what he's doing through this ministry. And the thing about the fork has to do with my calling as a prophet. Since churchianity preaches that there are no more prophets and certainly not in the same style as the Old Testament prophet. When there are prophets, according to Matthew 23, 34, where Jesus said, I send unto you prophets. How clear is that? And he's clearly using me in that way. And the way Maya, me, is used to doing it is the same way the Bible teaches by porking out unashamedly on the word of God, the food. Revelation 19.13 says his name is called the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the food. Jesus is the door, right? He's all these things. So while churchianity preaches that we should do this, pork out on God, when we do it, they take offense. Even though Jesus says, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Luke 7.23 And so suddenly the room became very quiet because everyone took offense. So they all stopped eating to stare at Maya like, what the heck is wrong with you, lady? Get out, shut up, go away. 
The Lord prophesied that people would behave like Saul before he became Paul, who began to destroy the church, going from house to house, dragging off both men and women, and putting them in prison. Acts 8.3 Jesus said, The brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Matthew 10.21 So maybe Maya's thought is prophetic. God knows, and time will tell. In any case, the Queen of Queens, the soon-to-be Bride of Christ, members of the Body of Christ, will finally take time out and actually listen to what Maya, what I, have to say, and apply it. Because as it is with porky people, we tend to love food. And true Christians do actually love food, love the Lord. Even if they're currently apostate, it's like bratty teens who are in rebellion still do actually love their parents, even though they don't treat them as if they do. And it is for heaven's sake that we Mayas eat this way since that's where the Lord currently lives, sitting in the heavens, Psalm 2-4. And the food, the Word of God, tastes better when we pork out on it because that's how we can connect the dots. <laughs> and when we do it as a group, at least a remnant within the body of Christ will be able to do a whole lot more than just connect the dots like they did 2,000 years ago. They could even raise the dead. James 1 says, Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and immediately forgets what he looks like. And the queen is very fat today, fatter than she's ever been, referring to James 5.5. 5. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Romans 12.1 Finally, having been honest with herself, the queen says, Tonight we eat as Maya does. And everyone had to listen to the queen because she represents the king of kings. There are different members of the court listed since there are different parts of the body, according to 1 Corinthians 12. The body is not made up of one part, but of many. In fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. That its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Today's Christians totally don't get it. But a remnant at least will at God's appointed time, referring to Habakkuk 2.3. In any case, there are different parts and they all have a different calling. Good works, which God has before ordained, that we each should walk in. Ephesians 2.10 And the queen outdoes them all, because that's what it means to be queen at something. Therefore, I represent the fat queen, as she should be, porking out on the food, especially loving the blood of Christ. So, while one at the table feeds the dog, you see that the queen doesn't, since Dogs in the Bible tend to represent people who do not love God, as was prophesied of the Lord. In Psalm 22, 16, Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. In other words, all who keep feeding the dogs will not experience the latter rain outpouring and may not experience the marriage supper of the Lamb. Porking out like Maya, like me, the queen, the body of Christ, will finally feel satisfied. Therefore, the queen says, From this day on, the people in my kingdom shall eat as Maya showed us, but only on holidays. And everybody's pretty happy about that. For one thing, the people in her kingdom are the people in his kingdom, the body of Christ, the born again. And holidays means holy day, which is every day. 
The Bible says in Hebrews 3.13, encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. Every day is a holy day because the Lord is the Lord of every day, not just Saturday or Sunday. And the rest of the passage says it all. We're supposed to encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, every day, have genuine fellowship in Christ so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness, which is exactly what's happened. We didn't listen to the Lord, so we stopped encouraging one another daily, made it a Sabbath, Saturday, or Sunday thing, which is, I mean, the whole thing is a sham. And so we've been outrageously deceived as he has me revealing through this ministry. Genuinely thankful for having been helped to truly enjoy the food, the queen asked Maya how she can repay her. And of course, we want dessert. So they bring out my favorite. Cooks come in with piles of ice cream. The cooks are angels who are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Hebrews 1.14 So that they're dressed in white. Acts 1.10 And they're also the faithful who have not soiled their clothes, whom the chef says will walk with him dressed in white, for they are worthy. Revelation 3.4 They are also those who come out of great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 7.14 they have different colored shoes because of who they've been called to serve and feed. Revelation 5.9 says about Christ, the head chef, that he's worthy. For he was slain and redeemed to God by his blood, his family, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. People of different languages and nations are people of different color. That's why their shoes are different colors. In the book, which has much more detail, you can see how I made some of these connections. Since Jesus truly is food, according to John 6.55, he's given me several culinary interpretations along with this timeline. However, he gave me the timeline two decades ago and only showed me the lies about the law of Moses a couple of years ago. So I cover that specifically in Satan Exposed, Rightly Dividing the Word, a free book you can get from my website. The Law of Christ, Galatians 6.2, which all of humanity is under, is much more delicious than the Law of Moses, which is the ministration of death, according to 2 Corinthians 3.7. The prophets are clearly mashed potatoes. The temple came from Satan, who has the power over death, according to Hebrews 2.14, which says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too, Christ too, shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. Who is that? That is the devil. Having been deceived for all of human history, most love steak when it's actually murder on a platter. The Messiah is represented by ice cream since the body of Christ is so cold, as prophesied in Matthew 24, 12, which says, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, as my testimony reveals. And yet he remains delicious. Romans 8, 39 says, neither height nor depth nor any other creature, nothing shall be able to separate the born again from the love of God, which is in Christ. And so, no matter what's happened, because of Christians, professing Christians, many of whom are, I discern, born again, no one's been able to steal my joy in the Lord, thank God. <laughs> and he's revealing that not even our own unfaithfulness can separate us from his love. And we've been extremely, excruciatingly unfaithful. Whipped cream represents the Holy Spirit, who is a rushing mighty wind, according to Acts 2.2. 2. Whipped around all over the place since the wind blows wherever it pleases, 
you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. And so it is with everyone born of the Spirit, John 3, 8. And he's pretty cool. And finally, we're getting the latter rain, the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit in all of history. Yum, yum. You'll notice with the ice cream that the more they bring out, the more cherries are provided with it. In other words, as we move into the future and more born-again Christians take him seriously, we'll have more of his presence, more of the cherry on top. The queen asked Maya to stay forever, but she said she really had to get back home. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 2.21, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. Philippians 2.23. And out of that whole group, the child is the only one expressing genuine and complete biblical sorrow at the fact that she's leaving. And the Lord says, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Mark 10:15. Sitting next to the captain of my salvation is not a place I've taken by force as most do. Jesus says, continues to say, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Matthew 11:12. I haven't done that. I'm sitting where the captain invited me to sit by saying to me, come up here and I will show you what must take place. Revelation 4.1 And my ministry reveals that he's given me a prophetic ministry and has shown me what will take place. I cover it most thoroughly in God's plan, a vision for the body. And he's had me sum it up in many different ways and with many different graphics like this one, which is the whole vision. So you've got before the ages, then the ages of the ages, which include the present evil age from Adam to the Lord's return, then the age of Christ, commonly called the millennial reign of Christ, then what I've called the age of judgment, and then the end of the ages where he's made all things new, all, every single thing. Maya says, I must teach my parents some manners. And the ministry which the Lord has entrusted to me is all about teaching my parents, my so-called elders, along with the rest of the body of Christ, real manners. Love must be sincere hate what is evil, and cling to what is good, Romans 12, 9. Love comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith, 1 Timothy 1, 5. And it's not at all what the body of Christ is currently walking in, as my testimony of more than two decades reveals. I mean, that's part of God's point in having me reach out to professing Christians for that long because they've all, every single one, reacted in the exact same way to one degree or another so that I haven't been able to get through to even one professing Christian in all that time, more than two decades because they have no real manners. They are not like Christ at all. We as a group are not like Christ at all. You can also see in the graphic of all the people waving that some aren't. Some couldn't care less that she's leaving. Like, good, go. And that's how it is and how it will always be, even more so when he opens up this ministry. So that's the gist of it. For a much more detailed interpretation, read the book. i give you a link to it in the track that's in the video descriptions box. Jesus says, 
continues to say, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me, because night is coming when no one can work. John 9, 4, that is both when we die, right, we'll be asleep and we can no longer work, but it's also when tribulation comes, whether it comes to the whole world or to us individually. Let's say tomorrow I was imprisoned. That's it. I can't work anymore. Not much. You know, maybe a little in the prison unless I'm in solitary confinement. Or let's say I got sick. I had pneumonia a few years ago. That was it. No more work. I was down. So this is my prayer. Father, raise up a staff of culinary masters so that we make the food taste as amazing as it actually is. And he's drooling just thinking of it because that's what he died for, to make his church holy, glorious, and without blemish. A group of people who love him like crazy and feed others the truth. And he's the truth. 